section 76 will be solving equations with radical. The first thing I wanted to mention is something called the power rule. It's using the power rule. And the idea with this is that we isolate the radical. And raise both sides. To that power to eliminate the radical. I'll explain this in a second. When I say raise both sides to the power, what I'm really talking about is the index. So if it's a third root, the index is three, we're raising both sides to the third power. And I had maybe about like three or four examples of this I wanted to go over with you, but I do want to mention one other thing before we get into solving these type of equations, and that's something called extraneous solutions. We've talked about extraneous solutions before. And the last time I mentioned it with you, I said that there were three types of extraneous solutions. Uh, what an extraneous solution means is it just means that you did the algebra correctly, but the answers don't actually work. This happens when we have absolute value equations. For example, if you get an answer where it says the absolute value of x is equal to negative 2, that's impossible. So absolute value will never equal negative. You have to check absolute value equations to see if you got any extraneous solutions. Second time this could happen is with radicals. We'll be seeing that uh, during today's class. The deal with radicals is you can't have a radical that is a negative number or you also can't have a radical equal to a negative number. The third type of extraneous solution we're checking for is uh, with rational equations. And with rational equations, the denominator can't equal zero. We talked about this when we were looking for the domain of rational equations, and we know that the denominator can't be zero. So let's go ahead and try a few problems, and we'll make sure whatever answer we get, we just have to check it in the original problem to make sure it's not extraneous. For the directions for these, I'm just going to ask you to solve. Let's do the square root of 5x plus 1 is equal to 4. Now, using the power rule, we want to isolate the radical. Isolate just means get it by itself. It's already by itself. Then raise both sides to the index power. So this is a square root, which means we're going to raise both sides to the second power to get rid of it. When you raise an index of two radical to the second power, it cancels. 5x plus 1 would just equal 16. Subtracting the 1 gives us 15. So x 
this would be three. Maybe. We just have to plug it back into the original problem and just make sure it works because with radical equations, it is possible to get an extraneous solution. I'm gonna just put a little check here. And the square root of five times three is 15 plus one is 16. So this one's fine. Four is definitely equal to four. That's the correct answer. There's no extraneous solutions for this. What about if we had the square root of 3x plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 0? So using the power rule, we talked about getting the radical isolated, get the radical by itself. So just for our first step, I'm going to subtract the 2 on both sides. Now that the radical is isolated, it's a second radical, second root. So I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. We get 3x plus 1 is equal to 4. Subtracting the 1 gives us 3. Dividing by 3 gives us 1. Maybe. We just have to plug it back in and see if it's an extraneous solution. I'm going to go ahead and check, and you could use your calculator if you want, but if you plug in 1 for x, you get the square root of 3 times 1 plus 1 plus 2. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, it's not 0. So this would be an extraneous solution. Actually, the right answer for this is we just say that there's no solution, or we could even just do this. So those little parentheses, those brackets with a zero with a line through it, that means the same thing as no solution. Let's see in this problem where it pulls apart for us. We could have seen that there was no solution earlier on in the problem. Anyone see at what step? Yeah, right here. You could have actually stopped right there because the problem saying the square root of what number is equal to negative two, that's impossible. Uh, typically what I do is I go through the whole problem and then I check, but you are able to stop if you, you know, see a problem like that and just say that there's no solution. Another? What if we had the square root of 25 minus x is equal to x plus 5? Well, the rules are the rules. Once you get the radical by itself, raise both sides to that power. So that's a square root. I'm going to square both sides. you square a square root, it cancels. Make sure you're careful on the right side of this equation. You can't distribute that power of two because there's a plus sign in between. What we have to do is distribute. I'm gonna write it twice, and then I'm going to distribute. Get x squared plus 10x plus 25. And the way that we solve an equation like this is we want to make it equal to zero and then see if we could factor to solve it. So I'm going to subtract 25 on both sides, add x on both sides, and I get zero is equal to x squared plus 11x.
way that we would finish this is you could factor at an x at x plus 11. We would use what we talked about called the zero uh, factor property, where if you have something times something else is zero, we just say x is zero, x plus 11 is zero. And it looks like our answers would just be negative 11 and zero. We just have to check to see if those answers are actual answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check by plugging in zero first. And I get the square root of 25 minus zero is equal to zero plus five. Five equals five, so it looks like zero is a good answer. Let's do the same thing with negative 11. The square root of 25 minus negative 11 is equal to negative 11 plus 5. Well, I know this isn't going to work because on the right side, you'll have a negative number. The square root will never equal a negative. So negative 11 is extraneous. The only answer is uh, zero. One thing I just want to point out is that these are different. This simple just means that there's no solution. Zero just means x equals zero. Right, so they're totally different. One more of these before we take a look at the second half of this lesson. Let's do it over here. So what if we had the square root? Of 4x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 2x plus 7. It's already isolated, so we can go ahead and just square both sides. This will just be 4x squared plus 2x minus 3. On the right side, we will have to uh, distribute this. We get 4x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 4x squared plus uh, 2 times 7 is 14, so this would be 28x plus 49. And then like before, we want to make it equal to zero to solve it. So I'm just going to subtract 4x squared on both sides. Subtract 2x on both sides. And I'll add the 3. So we just get 26x plus 52. Bring the 52 on the other side. 26x is equal to negative 52. We divide both sides by 26. And we just get x is equal to negative 2.
on the side, let's confirm that that's a correct answer. So the square root of four times two squared plus two X, uh, X was two. So two times negative two minus three equal two times negative two plus seven. Two times negative two is negative four plus seven is three. Uh, on the left side, four times four is 16, 16 minus four is 12, 12 minus three is nine, square root of nine is three. So it looks like negative two is our answer. If there's multiple radicals, want to isolate the more complex radical, raise both sides to that power. And again, I'll put power with index and parentheses. And repeat. So this is if there's multiple radicals. I have a couple examples to go through with this. Uh, first problem, say solve. First one is the cubed root of 2x plus 7 is equal to the cubed root of 3x minus 2. This does have multiple radicals. The whole idea is we want to isolate the more complex one, raise both sides to the power, and then keep doing that until all the radicals go away. So this one, it looks like we have one radical is equal to one radical. So we could just simply raise both sides to the third power. By doing that, that'll cancel out our radicals. We just get 2x plus 7 is equal to 3x minus 2. And we could just solve this. Uh, bring the 3x over, bring the 7 over. We get negative x is equal to negative 9, or just x is equal to 9. Check this. We get the cube root. I'm just going to plug 9 in. So 9 times 2 is 18 plus 7 is 25 on the left side. On the right side, we get the cube root. 9 times 3 is 27 minus 2 is 25. By checking, we get exactly the same thing on both sides. So it looks like 9 is the correct answer. For this next example, make sure you have your seatbelt on. All 
All right, here we go. Uh, I'm actually going to give you two of these because they're a little tricky. So, first one, let's take a look at is the square root of 2x plus 3 plus square root of x plus 1 is equal to 1. Now what you can't do is you can't just square both sides and just square everything. That's really wrong. To do that on the test, I can't give you any partial credit. So what we have to do is what I said initially. If there's multiple radicals, we pick one of the radical that's more complicated, and then we raise both sides to that power, and then we just keep repeating. So let me show you what that means for this problem. Well, Quinn, which, which radical looks like it has more going on? 2x plus 3. So I'm going to get that radical by itself by bringing this other radical on the other side. So I have the square root of 2x plus 3 is equal to 1 minus the square root of x plus 1. Now let's square both sides. I'm going to square the square root, which will make it go away. But we also have to square the other side. When we square the other side, that means we're going to have to foil. This is the hardest part of the problem. It's going to be 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times a negative radical is just minus square root of x plus 1. The inner terms would be the same thing, minus 1 square root of x plus 1. And then we're going to multiply the last terms. We're multiplying a negative radical by the same negative radical. So the best way to write this is just positive square root of x plus 1 squared. You're multiplying it by itself, which is the same thing as squaring. You can get past that, but the rest of this is going to be easy. So let's just combine like terms. 2x plus 3 is equal to 1 minus 2 square root of x plus 1. We talked about that in our last class, how to add radicals. When you square a square root, that cancels. You just get x plus 1. Uh, I'm going to bring the x on the other side, and I'm going to subtract. So let's see here. We have 2x. Subtract the x on both sides. So this would just be x plus 3 is equal to 2 minus 2 times the square root of x plus 1. Subtract the 2 on both sides. you can see this is a simpler problem. We're going to keep trying to get that radical by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And now that we have the radical by itself, we could square both sides. And that'll get rid of all the radicals. Just give us uh, the top is going to be x plus 1 times x plus 1, or x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 4 is equal to just x plus 1. The way we 
redo that part um, in case I went too fast for anyone, because it's just x plus 1 times x plus 1 divided by negative 2 times negative 2. That's what I did. That's where that comes from. Now we just want to make it equal to 0 and solve it. What I'm going to do is, uh, to finish this, we could either multiply everything by 4, the least common denominator, like we talked about doing, or you could cross multiply. So it doesn't really matter. We did spend some time talking about the least common denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything here by uh, 4. That'll cancel out our denominator. And then we want to make it equal to zero to solve it. This is factorable, so we could just factor this x minus 3 times x plus 1, giving us x is equal to 3, and x is equal to negative 1. It is a longer problem, so uh, we'll do one more just to, for extra practice. Let's just check to see if any of these answers work. Original problem, I'll just call this our check. The original problem was 2x plus 3 plus square root of x plus 1 is equal to 1. So let's just check when x is 3. This will be the square root of 6 plus 3 is 9 plus the square root of 3 plus 1 is 4. So 3 plus 2 is not equal to 1. So that means 3 is extraneous. I'm also going to check when x is negative 1. We get the square root of negative 2 plus 3 plus the square root of negative 1 plus 1. And it, it looks like negative 1 works. So that would be our only solution. You can see it is important that you check your answers. Let me show you one more of these. What if we had the square root of x plus 9? minus the square root of x is equal to the square root of 3. Same idea. We want to get the more complicated radical by itself. So let's add the square root of x on both sides to get rid of it. Get the square root of x plus 9 is equal to the square root of 3 plus the square root of x. And square both sides. You have a single term on the left hand side, so that's just x plus 9. On the right side, we get the square root of 3 plus the square root of x times the square root of 3 plus the square root of x. After 4, we'll have to distribute that. 
square root of 3 times the square root of 3. We saw in our last class that that's the square root of 9. Square root of 3 times the square root of x is the square root of 3x plus the square root of 3x. And then we're going to have the square root of x times itself or the square root of x squared. Simplifying, we get x plus 9 is equal to 3 plus 2 root 3x plus x. Let's subtract the x on both sides, subtract the 3 on both sides. So this is just 6 is equal to 2 root 3x, which is a little bit of a nicer problem than before. We can divide by 2. Square both sides. And x would be 3. check our answer. So we had square root of x plus 9 minus the square root of x is equal to square root of 3. We were to plug 3 in for x, we get the square root of 12 minus the square root of 3. Nice little review from our last class. Remember the square root of 12 is just the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is 2 square root of 3 minus 1 square root of 3 is 1 square root of 3. You wind up with exactly the same thing, which means 3 is an answer. One more example for tonight. And I want to show you how to solve a formula for a variable with radicals. I only wanted to do one example with this. There's no need to, to do multiple here. But what if I asked you to solve for r and z is equal to the square root of r divided by 2? So we want to get r by itself, which is going to require getting rid of that square root. So just from what we talked about so far, can anybody volunteer a first step to make this happen? Um, multiply by exponent two. Yeah, so I'm hearing online and I'm hearing in person that uh, we want to square both sides. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get rid of that square root because right now it's kind of locking up that R. So if we just square both sides first, we 
get c squared is equal to that will cancel out the square root and we just get r over t. And then to get r by itself, we could just multiply both sides by t. So r would equal t times z squared. 